And at 18, when I graduated, I already knew what I wanted to do and I'd already learned to fly. And I had encountered every obstacle you could find about not being able to fly. I found out my eyes were weak and I also found out that uh, I had nausea, air sickness every time I got off the ground. My first flight, and that was devastating to me because I dreamed of nothing else. And I decided that I was not going to accept that I could not do what I really wanted to do and that was to become a pilot. I let it go, and I went straight out of that revetment, got airborne, got the gear up, and it was a 4,000-foot ceiling, and I no more than got off the ground, and I started thinking, you know, this is the dumbest thing you've ever done. Here you are in an enemy airplane, and the war's not over, and I, our Air Force people come in and see you. They're gonna take an easy pot shot at you, and you did. I was selected for the X-1 program and was asked by a friend of mine who wasn't flying jets, fly over the Springfield Airport the first chance you get with the jet and I'll tell them it was me. That's mistake number one. So I came back and I had a lot of fuel and there was a Springfield Airport underneath. I, I'll just make a trip across there upside down. I did. The numbers on the side of the airplane were small. And I never thought anything about it. Two months went by and I was elated about being selected for the X-1 program. And a new colonel came in and he said, uh, I just got a, a letter here saying that uh, somebody buzzed the Springfield Airport on such and such a date. Was that you? I said, yes, sir, it was. He said, well, I know two things about you. You're honest because there was only one jet that flew in the whole United States that day, and you were in it. <laughs> but I also know that you're not responsible. He says, you're gonna help him out, you're gonna live with him, you're gonna fly with him, you're gonna be his backup pilot. And I thought, oh boy, you know, there were 16 people in that pyramid of candidates to get to that peak I had made, and now I've lost it all. But what made my friend Bob Hoover so special and so important to aviation in the nation was not the gifts he possessed, it was his undying willingness to share them with the rest of us. Mm -hmm.